Hey, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. But I continue to work on the foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Remember, folks, we still have time to make it right. Make it right with God. Now, I got to test this, so let's see how this came about. So what do I mean by making it right? Making right, making up. Some people don't realize if you goof up, there is a simple explanation why their relationship fell apart. Simply say sorry. Now, if the other person does not want to accept that, that is a different story. But I am talking today to the biohackers, those that want to take control over their own health, physically as well as spiritually. Folks, it is not just taking a little powder or a little pill and then you look healthy. I am talking as a person that has done all that stuff. I've been focused on health my whole life because when I was uh, early 16s, I became paralyzed. I had a facial paralysis, the left side of my faith, my mouth was pulling and I had a hard time, folks. It was four or five months that it took before I could walk again, talking. I was told I would have a speech impediment for the rest of my life. And the only time I felt that my mouth was drooping is when I was minus 25 degrees in Canada in the snow for a longer period of time. That is where I noticed my mouth was still drooping a little bit but there are other people that are dealing with other issues in their lives a biohacker is not a perfect person it is an individual that strives to improve and striving means you are making maybe strides only once every day once every week maybe once every month it is immaterial but what is important is that you do something those that are sitting there, well, I guess, I'd hope so. Those are not the people I want to talk to today. I want to talk to people that are fired up, that are pissed off. People that say, I do not take it anymore. Those are the people that I like to meet. Because that means you're ready to acknowledge if something. That's called the shifting baseline syndrome. And it's taken place in this society. And today, a lot of people are surprised when they hear that term. They've heard it, a shifting baseline syndrome. So what is that? It is something that the whole of humanity is dealing with. Every generation, for the most part, lowers its standards over the course of time. If we go back to the Roman empires, they had a tough, they were rough, they were fighting constantly. So they improved. Then we had the Dark Ages. They improved. Then we came to the 1800s, 1900s. Now we are in 2000. And you think we improved? We hardly have time to sit down, talk with each other, talk with your parents. We hardly take time for personal development because all we're doing is stupid little telephones and being driven by something that most people don't even realize. Now, I don't say you do this on purpose. I realize that most people don't even uh, are aware of it. They don't even know that this is happening. For instance, if I talk about health and I make an introduction to the three stages of healing and share the secret of a perfect lifestyle. One, prepare for natural healing. 
to empower natural healing and three, fueling natural healing. Now there are a few people that seem to spend years developing a rare skill in a world of social media distractions and instant gratification. And I think that is the big problem that we have today. Everything that is happening, we gotta have it now. Instant gratification. Creating my YouTube videos is a solitary practice, yet you can find peace and solitude in it. It requires an in-depth study, time and dedication needed to acquire rare and valuable skills, an antidote for modern living. You say, what? Just to make a few videos? I reached today uh, the 205th video that I made. The first time I had a hard time because I didn't even know what I needed. When I was asked to promote my book, they suggested to do it through videos, social media. Now, remember folks, I was born in 1950 and I know and I realized that we were the generation that moved an awful lot of things. We are also called the baby boomers. So as of the making of this video, I'm just about 70 years of age, almost 70 and a half. And social skills were not exactly on my skill. Talking about videos, for some people it comes naturally because as a kid they grew up, they used whatever they could use. For me, it was a challenge. I had to understand a few things, but I'd finished my book, I published the book, it's on Amazon, and a deception protocol. And then I realized it is the protocol sun blueprint. Why? Because I discovered a lot of things in myself through a period that was very dark in my life. And one of the ways of helping yourself out of it is communicating with others. Now, since I was no longer in Canada, where my family is, my kids and friends that I have there, I am now in the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, I didn't know too many people anymore after being away for so long. So writing took me a while. It took me over seven years to really formulate everything. And when I had done that, I realized there is a spiritual aspect to it that I have to share. In the process, I see myself as a 40 year old. So when my birthday came up this year, June the 2nd, I turned 70. I acknowledge the 70 that I'm finally 40 years of age plus 30 years of experience. Yes, folks. I am the new 70 and I hope that those that are baby boomers can join me. Now I am not only talking for baby boomers and two baby boomers, I'm talking to all those that are interested in health because if you are, there are a different ways. You got to prepare for natural healing. You have to empower natural healing and you have to fuel natural healing. Now. Granted, it starts with a couple of things that will help to eat decent, take some meals that are valuable. In other words, high protein and other material that you have to study. But there is another aspect where very few people talk about natural healing, and that is your spirit. See, our heart is not only what we put in ourselves, but also what we focus on. If we focus on some specialties like TV, rough stuff that is only available on TV or certain movies or whatever, you will notice that it will affect your spirit. If you focus on natural healing, you start reading up on it, you will develop skills. And that is what I had to do. When I started with social media, I had to first understand what you do. Now, I couldn't see the correlation between this and this and this. For me, it still takes me anywhere between uh, six to 10 hours to prepare a solid movie. I wanted to make videos, but to share a 
I have had a unique scenario that I was kicked out on the street when I was rather young. I was 16. I'd been, uh, my mom passed away when I was six. I went to an orphanage with my brothers and sisters. So seven years later, uh, my father remarried. I was called home. I didn't fit in exactly in a home anymore because I didn't know what it was and how to act. So shortly thereafter, I was sent to a private school. That was wonderful. I studied there, seminary, and then something happened, the Jesus movement. I got caught up in it and my father called me home and said, well, why don't you stay here for a bit? And somewhere, somehow it didn't click. So eventually, in the middle of the winter, December the 31st, I was not let in the door. In other words, they locked the door, forget it, bye-bye. And that was it. So for the rest of my life, I've been on my own. So technically, I had the foretaste of six years being at home as a kid and one and a half year, so seven and a half years. So now that I'm 70, I had the privilege of 10% of my life being in a family being married for 44 years plus, that has really been a tremendous powerhouse for me, my wife and my family, my kids. But in the process, the learning curve that I had to go through, that part, that is what we're talking about. Because that has everything to do with natural healing. Natural healing that fuels by preparation that can be empowered. But we, we human beings, we people that have ears, we don't pay attention because we don't care till it hits you. Some people are finding the pandemic annoying. Stupid thing, I don't believe it, and blah, 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 blah. But the reality is, if you are believe it or not, somewhere, somehow, people are dying. And if you happen to be one of them because you didn't believe it, you don't care, or you didn't care, now you're dealing with the consequences of your decision. I read a lot of material. I don't understand it all. I don't understand why this virus is a political issue. Why a mask is a political issue. I don't understand it. To me, it's very simple. Natural healing, and power natural healing and fuel it. So how do you do that? How can you take care of solid health? Now you're talking to a guy that first of all was paralyzed for five, six months. So I do know what it is to recuperate from something. Then when we got married, my son passed away in my own arms, seven and a half months old. Now when I say my own arms, I know that sounds redundant, but I want you to be aware that when the doctor said, yes, I have to conclude that your son is dead, something happened in my life, folks. And there are moments that it still hurts. It's many years ago. But I tell you, I never, ever forget that. So don't fool around with a pandemic. When something is happening that you don't understand, be at least smart enough to figure out what it is instead of having a stupid opinion about something that you have not even informed yourself about. Now, I've been rambling on and I feel great.